on this page, I put the sinking fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the sinking fun um, kit by Erin Condren. This is the May edition kit 226B10. And these I believe are under budget shells. off by a little bit but that's okay and then category now sinking funds I learned pretty much right when I started budgeting about two years ago um, I think it's great um, opportunity to help keep you prepared and save money and use your budget um, effectively. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down my sinking fund categories. So I have giving. And this isn't necessarily for charity. It's more so for like say Girl Scouts or say I used to babysit. So if they had a fundraiser at their school, like Jogathon, um, I would put aside some money there. So that way when that fundraiser or um, opportunity to help contribute to um, them, then I would have that money to do so and I wouldn't have to take it out of my budget. So right now, let's see, I have I have $10 and I'm not planning on putting any there. And then I'm not gonna put the take amount away just because I'm not sure I'll put that in at the end of the month as well as the end amount. So my next fund is for birthdays or any other gifts. And I usually put about $35 a month. However, this month there's a lot of birthdays. Plus I have a few birthdays that I need to catch up on um, for coworkers that I haven't seen in the last month. So it's a little bit more than 35. And then I have Christmas. Oops, let me just spell it out. I used to put X-M-A-S, but I think I'm just going to spell it out because it looks better that way. I mean, I have the room, so why not? And, oh shoot, I just realized I messed up. See, this is exactly why I like the erasable because my brain doesn't always work Okay, so I actually have zero in my birthday and gift fund, but I'm planning to add 65. Um, I pretty much used all of that last month, so that's why it's back at zero. And then Christmas, I have 350 and I'm planning to add a seven fifty. And then I also have my car registration. with 
which was sixty fifty eight, and I'm planning to add thirty dollars and twenty nine cents. And um, if you guys want to see how I break it down into my monthly contribute contributions, um, feel free to let me know. I'll probably make another video um, in case people aren't really that familiar with sinking funds. Because two years ago, I had no idea what sinking funds were. I've never heard of them. And once I found out what it was, it kind of changed everything for me. For the better, of course. Now, vacation. I started to save. And usually for vacation or um, a different form of savings, I would do the 52-week challenge. So that's where the $36 came from. However, um, with everything that's been happening, I haven't been contributing. So that's going to be at zero. And then hair. I actually plan to get my hair done for the first time in like four years. And then I had to push it back from March. The I think it was late March. I had to push it to April and then to May. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. So, I have most of this money. Oops. Okay, anyone else have problems with getting their zeros to match? Like, I feel like all my zeros look different, and it drives me crazy. Okay, so that's what I have in there. I'm not planning to contribute any. And I have some additional money that I saved. Um, besides that, this is just in my banking account. I have a separate account specifically for my sinking funds. So I'm not planning to add any. And then I have taxes. And then I'm not gonna put that down just because, like I said, it kinda goes with my income and I don't wanna give that information out, so I'm gonna leave that blank. And then my emergency fund. That is at $1,000.02. So I did contribute the $1,000, and then because this is set up in a savings account, whatever extra interest I accrue, I just add it to my emergency fund. So um, I received $2, or two cents, so that's what it's at. And I don't plan on contributing anymore. But um, once I get the updated interest, I'll go ahead and set that there. And that's pretty much it for my sinking funds. So I'm going to put the next washi. And then I've been recently watching Plans with Q. That's what else. And she gave me the idea to put down kind of like a transaction log specifically for my sinking funds down below. So since I have the room, I'm going to go ahead and add that. And I'll be right back. So I'm going to go ahead and put this at last washi at the bottom of the page. That should give me enough room to... Um, keep track of the transactions and because it's just birthdays that I'd be spending and yeah I don't plan on taking out I mean if anything it'd be the hair but there won't be really many any activity within my sinking logs besides the birthday purchases. So it should give me plenty of room. Okay. 
All right, so that's done. Now I'm going to go ahead and move on to the debt tracker. And I'm going to be using this May kit, same theme. It's kit 226B9. I do notice that these washies are a little bit bigger than the, or smaller than the hexagons. So you can see a little bit poking out. You could definitely wipe that out, wipe that out, sorry. But I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so now I'm going to flip this over just so I can kind of see where I've left off. Actually, before I do that, before I forget. Put this header. All right, there we go. Let me go back to April to see what my ending okay. So I have my student loan, my starting was seven three three seven ninety four and then my credit card one was at one ninety three, and then my PayPal is completely paid for. So right now it's just these two. Um, keep in mind this student loan is actually it has four student loans. That make up this big one loan because I'm not currently paying interest and for the past what five years I've been paying this off um, I've just been keeping it as one big payment um, I plan or the minimum payment I should say is 106.39 and of course I'm planning to pay off the 193. Now this, um, you may be wondering why did I only leave 193 on it? Like why didn't I pay it off in April? Um, what I did is I used this credit card to purchase um, something for my birthday fund, but I didn't have it available for my April budget. I wanted it to go towards my May budget, so I purchased it in April. However, I'm paying it off before my payment is due, and so that's why it's showing 193. So um, by the time that you're watching this, it will already be paid off. Now, like I said, I already purchased some things from Ikea and Amazon for my office um, desk area, and so that's going to be higher once it's no longer pending um, and then there may be a little bit of balance left over but there's that so that's pretty much my debt tracker and um, as I mentioned earlier I do have a car lease however I'm not putting it within my debt tracker because um, I'm paying the minimum payment only I have about two years left and I don't want to pay it all off before hand and something happened um, where maybe I need to turn it in. I don't know if there's any refunds or anything like that. So just to be safe, I'm paying the minimum payment only. But I guess what I'll do is I'll put that down as and then I'll put the minimum payment, which is $349. Again, sorry if it's shaky. And then at the end of the month, oops. I'll go ahead and put down if there's any interest in the end amount. All right, let me 
see. Just gonna quickly go ahead and pull up my lease information. Bear with me here. Okay, so I have seven, three, three, four, twenty five. So that is my beginning amount. All right, so that's all of the debt tracker. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. Perfect. And then I'm going to put this at the bottom. Let me know in the comments if you think I should move this washi to under this um, the result, the total results of my debt tracker, if you think I should move it up here. I feel like because the washi with the header debt tracker is at the top, I should put this at the bottom. However, if you guys think differently, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and let's go ahead and get back to our next page. Now you may notice this washi is different. I actually purchased some washi, I think it was back in January or February. And it was just some washi that Kate had on sale and it was navy and peach. It was like an older um, washi kit from May, I think 2018 to 2019. And so I went ahead and used it for my transaction log. So this, these last two pages I use for my transaction log. And um, basically, I put A lot of people I think only do one page or I think Sarah Marie uses this transaction log for her sinking funds and then other people use the monthly overview to track their expenses but I don't do weekly check-ins um, and so that's why I just use both of those pages for the transaction log plus um, it kind of keeps me track of it helps me keep track of my bank account and um lets me stay aware of when things are still pending if there's any transactions that are missing um if i was overcharged things like that so this just helps me kind of stay in the loop and i always have a start balance of five hundred dollars that's enough cushion where at the beginning of the month when some of the bills are due i still have enough remaining so i don't go into um an overdraft okay so now i'm gonna go ahead i don't have a heading there are um transaction logs spending logs by kate However, I don't use it just because mine is a little bit different. I'll go ahead and write what I keep track of and then what hers has. So the first thing I do is I have the date. And then I have the type. So this could be tender type. Um... If it's 
like an online payment, I'll put OL for online. If I go out somewhere and use the debit card, I'll put debit. Um, if it's a deposit, I'll put deposit. Um, sometimes my dad will transfer money to me if he's using like my Prime account um, for free shipping. So he'll pay me that way and I'd put transfer from parents, things like that. And then I'll put location. So the place where I did the transaction. Um, so even if it's online, I'll put the website name or um, say if it was a credit card payment, I would put the name of the credit card and then payment. And then the thing that I do that I haven't noticed others do, maybe one person, but I can't remember who it was, is I keep track by putting a plus or minus sign with the, each transaction. So basically I'll put a plus if I'm receiving money and I'll put a minus if I'm withdrawing money. So, and I mark this with green for the plus sign or red for the minus sign. And basically when I'm going through these trans, tra sorry, when I'm going through these transactions, as I'm going down, if I see a lot of red, then that it didn't automatically indicates, hey, I'm spending too much. So not only do I have a card tracker um, in the overview page, but I also keep track of easily spotting my payments that I'm receiving and payments that I'm withdrawing. So that just helps me visually spot And then I have the amount, and then I have the balance. And then I'm actually going to move the amount over just a smidge. Okay, so those, that's what it looks like. And then I just draw lines down vertically so I don't have it go crooked. And that's pretty much it. Yeah, I went ahead and did both sides with the lines. It actually didn't take me as long as I thought, which was awesome. Um, that's always a plus. So that pretty much concludes my budgeting setup for the month of May. Um, I'll go ahead and actually fill in my monthly overview separately just because I want to keep the birthday thing um, private. It's going to take me a, a few minutes to figure out the goals and such. So I'm going to leave that for me to fill out later. And then I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't let me know what you think in the comments. Um, if you think I should change anything, any advice for me to set up items. And um, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.